Okay, so let's start then. So today we are going to work on our outline and script writing. So script is another word for narrative. Last time you have probably already developed your draft narrative at home. So you basically know what are your key ideas and what ideas you are going to include in your digital story. And today we will learn how to outline these ideas. When telling a story, I really recommend you not to read the story word for word. I recommend you to prepare a clear outline based on your key ideas and then speak it. Of course, it can be a little bit challenging because when you are speaking spontaneously, you can have some mistakes or you can just say some words wrong, but still it's okay. It will make your story more real and it's better if you speak it rather than to read it. Of course, um, you have to have a clear prepared outline in hand in order to narrate your story in that way. So in the first place, we will talk about framing your story. Before starting the outlining process, ask yourself some questions about the key ideas that you have. In your hand now, you have a mind mapped version of your ideas. So all your ideas on this topic are in front of your eyes. Now look at them and ask a question. What will make your story unique? So there are tons of digital stories on the internet. Why should people uh, watch your story? Why is it engaging? And what makes it such a great story? Try to find some strong points of your story and stick to them. And also try, try to be true to yourself. Try to stay true to your personal experience so that it will be your personal story, so that it touches you personally. And also try to stick to the time limit. An ideal digital story is two, three minutes long. The longer it is, the less successful the story will be because you know that people have usually shorter attention span. They will not spend five to six minutes watching someone else's story. The shorter it is, the better it will be. That's why try to have a shorter narrative, not a long story. Even if you have a long story, even if you have written a really long draft, in the uh, second draft, try to, um, try to cross out some of the ideas that you don't really need. Try to make your words simpler and try to use less words so that it will not be too wordy. Also, in outlining, it's important to do some exercise in the beginning. Well, when outlining your story, pay attention what kind of verbs you are using. It's better to use the verbs that show, that, show your senses, like the things you see, things you feel, things you smell or taste, it will make your story really touching and personal. And also you can describe the big picture or you can stick to a very tiny aspect. It all depends on your purposes. Point of view is another important element. When telling a story, you can tell it from your own point of view using I, or you can use third person saying he or she, or even it, it, there are stories which is told based on the perspective of many people using they, yes? But usually digital stories, especially personal ones, are told based on the um, first person narrative. Using I is an accepted form of personal digital storytelling. It doesn't really have to be your own story. Maybe it's the story that you have read. Maybe it's the story that someone told you. You can make it your own and use I and say it from your own point of view. Of course, avoid plagiarizing someone else's ideas. We talked about plagiarism last time. So, and also when outlining your ideas, Keep in mind what kind of photos, words, videos, or other materials you will be using for these exact words. 
and how long each sentence should take in your digital story. Having this kind of picture in mind will make the later steps easier. Uh, the development of media part will be easier if when writing an outline, you have a clear picture of what will it include. Now, there are two tips for making great digital stories, not usual ordinary digital stories, but really great stories have two elements that other stories usually lack. The first thing is truthfulness. Digital stories that make a positive impact on others are usually based on true stories. So this is someone's real experience. It can be your own, it can be someone else's experience that you know. Whatever it is, try to make it true. Of course, you don't really want to feel too much rehearsed, but it's advisable to prepare your outline, to try to speak it in, uh, in front of the mirror, or you can try recording your own voice and seeing the flow of the words, what kind of pitch you are using and where you should follow your intonation, where you should raise your intonation, that will really help you. You are your own judge. It's a personal digital story, so it should, it should be meaningful to you in the first place. That's why try to rehearse it. But of course, don't make it a um, full pre-prepared story because, because it will sound not real. And another important aspect of great digital story is strengths. Where do we take strengths? We, we put the strengths into words. Try not to use complex words, but strong words. Words that has strong sense. So we will talk about this kind of words in the later workshops. Now, we move on to developing plot. We have our ideas. We know which ideas come first, which ideas analyze and describe our main ideas. And we have a clear picture of what our conclusion is. Now, we have to create plot based on this organization of our ideas. You should know that there is no single accepted format for digital stories. Anything creative works. But still, there are some things you should consider before writing your plot. Digital stories, just like any other story, they are stories. So they should be based on a storyline. They should have clear beginning middle and clear end. Of course, you can use flashbacks. You can go back and forth in time, but still, if you follow a storyline of beginning, middle and end, it will be clearer to your audience and it will be more successful, more accepted, acceptable. Well, usually stories have attention gainer in the beginning. In the beginning, you should use something that momentarily grabs the attention of your audience and makes your audience to watch this story till the end. It can be a strong quotation, it can be a really interesting image, or it can be soothing music, depending on what you choose. But this beginning five seconds of your story is the most important part of it, because it will Actually, it will make your audience follow up on your story or just stop watching your story. You really want to have a positive impact on your listeners. So in the first place, you have to make them engage in your story. For this, the beginning period of your story uh, is an important part to work on. So in the beginning, use a hook an attention gainer, which will make your audience to watch your story till the end, to think about it, to reflect on it. Now, a storyteller might choose a link to their personal experience, or this experience can be something common that's shared by the community. In our case, issues touching the young girls, that's, that's a problem shared by our community, yes? It's probably stories that we have heard, stories we have seen in others' lives, or it can be even your own personal story. Or you can include all of these elements and make it one story. Whatever you do, you have to uh, 
um, you have to aim at gaining the attention of your audience because the main purpose of digital storytelling is to create empathy. Well, also, as I already told, length is an important part of digital storytelling. The shorter your story is, the better the result will be. If you have um, 20 images or video segments, and here you, your word count should be between 250 and 375. That's just one guideline. Well, if you stick to it, you will probably uh, you will probably know for sure how much to write. So again, for two, three minutes video, for two, three minutes digital story, you can write somewhere between 250 words to 375 words. It again depends on what you choose, whether you want to uh, put a stress on the images you are using or the important tool you are using is the narrative. It depends on your purpose again. Uh, these guidelines help make sure that stories capture and hold the attention of their audiences, especially if they are shared on social media. The story you are going to create will be peer reviewed. We will review each other's stories, give our suggestions, our reviews. Based on this, we will uh, make changes. And then, of course, we will post it on social media for others to watch and to give their own comments. That's why uh, you have to make catching the attention the first task of your narrative. I think Dildora is having some problems entering the um, conference today. Yes, she has been trying many times. Well, I think she has some internet connection problems. I hope she will join us very soon. Well, okay. Viewers should be able to easily watch digital stories and feel empowered to take an action. So keep in mind your target audience. In our case, it's young girls. Try to use the language that better suits the young girls. Try to use the expressions that make sense to them. And here, the strength of your digital story comes from. Now, before recording your narrative, try to tell your story to yourself. Well, you can try recording your own voice as we have already discussed, or you can get the feedback of others. Once you are confident in your narrative, it's a really good idea to share it with some friends. To, to see how it affects them and to get some useful and constructive feedback on what to choose, um, what to include and, or what to omit in your story. Hi, are you back, Dora? I think you are having some connection problems, right? It's okay, I will send you the recorded conference. Hello, yes, the last I'm sorry, I have to participate our problem. Sorry, now I think it's okay. Okay. So there is something called story circle in digital uh, story creating process. People make up a circles that can be an online circle or offline circle where people share their narratives and get feedback. Here we can create our online story circle in our Telegram group. When your story is ready, you can share it with others so that others will give their feedback. And based on this constructive feedback, you can uh, get new ideas or you can organize your ideas in different way. If you don't know any story circles uh, in your own community or among your friends, our Telegram group is a really good place to share, share your thoughts. I will try my best to give uh, my feedback on that. And actually stories are for sharing. So don't feel shy sharing it from the beginning. The many times you share your narrative, many opinions you will get. That's why sharing is caring here. Now we move on to the practical part of our digital storytelling workshop. Now it's your turn. Well, here I want um, you to switch on your microphones and to tell me about your story. So to answer to this questions, the first question is, 
what is unique about your story and what are the most important points to tell in just a few minutes. Uh, and based on this, we will work on the on the frame of your story. Now, uh, Ms. Zibonoso, I really liked your letter to your younger self. Can you please tell us um, what made you to write this letter and what is unique about this letter and why it makes sense to you? And why do you think that there are important points to share? Hello, Nargiza. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello? Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, as our story is for girls, uh, the topic for girls. Okay. I think. Uh, now we'll try to answer to these questions by myself. Well. Hello. Based on her story, I can say that the unique thing about her story is that. Um, oh, okay. She prefers to write in the chat. Hello. Okay. Okay. You can write your answers to the chat. Good. Okay. I can't really hear you. Hello, Nargiza. Well, okay, you can leave your answers here or you can write your answers on our Telegram group. I will later post this question on Telegram group. I will actually send this, um, send this handout to our Telegram group so that you can all write your answers. I think that would work better that way, yes? Okay, now. Okay, writing and drawing exercises. Once you have your key ideas, we will start drawing an outline. Uh, we already talked about this, so we use verbs related to five senses. We look at the big picture or to a tiny thing that we want to discuss about. We will try to tell the story from another person's point of view. We will answer the questions, who, what, when, where. And then we will keep in mind what kind of photos, words, and other materials we are going to include in our digital story. Here, we are ready to write our outline. How do we do it? This is the sample outline of your story. So we will divide it into three parts, beginning, body, and end. In the beginning part, well, you should have this main task in mind. In the first place, get your audience attention and motivate them to listen to what your story till the end. And then offer them some background information about the topic. If you straightly start on the issue, they may not know about your issue. So it's better to give some information. So if you are talking about um, gender inequality, you should give some background information on this. So what's happening? You have to tell your audience um, the information they need in order to understand why your issue is important then you have to highlight your own experience. You have to tell some points that personally relates to you. And set the tone for the story. Is it, um, uh, is it a very sensitive story? Or is it a story uh, which is very, um, let's say, very warm? Or is it a story set in a cold tone Whatever you choose, that's, that's of course up to you, but you have to select it and stay, uh, stick to this tone throughout the story. And then preview your main ideas. Make sure that all your main ideas are included in your story. And then you will move on to the body of your story. Body or the middle part of your story is the most important part of your story. Here you have to organize your main points usually two or five uh, main points in stories less than five minutes. We will stick to three, yes? You should have at least three main points. Then make sure that main points support the purpose of the idea. 
of course, your ideas are very dear to you, but still try to omit or delete the ideas don't, that don't serve the main idea because our purpose is to present one idea in one story. If you present too many ideas in one story, your audience can get confused. Now, try to include supporting material that can be facts, that can be pictures or videos, anything that supports your ideas. And then we will move on to the conclusion, conclusion part of our story, which summarizes all our main ideas. Here you will once more summarize your main points and then you will finish your circular journey, beginning, uh, matching the beginning with the end so that your story will make a sense. And of course, you have to use a really strong closing statement so that it will have a positive impact, so that it will change the thinking patterns of your audience and so that it will create the positive impact you are aiming at. So that's um, basically the main points of our today's workshop. I really recommend you to visit this website, imagineforest.com. Okay. Now, okay, Imagine Forest. Here. Imagineforest.com. This is a really helpful internet resource. It's a website for creating, um, okay, for creating your story. You can actually write your narrative right here. Well, let me log into that. Just see. Okay. So here we go. In here, you can choose um, you can choose any of the um, any of the ways that you want to write the narrative. You can enter this website as a student. You can enter it as a writer or as a teacher. In our case, our main purpose is to teach digital stories in our classroom. That's why we will basically choose using it as a teacher. So here, using this, you will, you can actually read, uh, write your narrative right here, here. Name of the class, so that's the digital storytelling workshop that's be right here. And here you can include your very first picture. After that, you will move on and then you can add another things. It can be a picture, a video or the text, and etc. So when you finish it, you will have your storyboard ready. You will not have to draw it um, on a paper. You will have a ready-made storyboard that can later be used in developing your digital story. Now, uh, in this part of our practical work, we are not choosing and adding pictures and videos yet. But when writing your narrative, you can just keep in mind, uh, you can think about what kind of pictures or elements you can include in your digital story. So I really recommend you to use this website for writing your narratives because it checks for spelling mistakes. It, um, it actually gives you a clear frame of where to include pictures, uh, which sentence should follow um, uh, the, uh, which sentence should be the first, uh, where should the body part come, it will give you a clear outline of your story. Now, it's, it's almost the finishing time. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or any parts of this today's workshop you didn't understand, you can feel free to um, message me on Telegram or on our Facebook, I will be more than happy to answer to your questions. I'll make sure to send the full video of our today's session in our Telegram group because some of you had connection problems today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nargiza. Uh, it was very interesting today to learn something new. And uh, 